Jason's parents and then our King Pink Karate and Wilson of Oregon. Um, we're a specialty retailer shop. Um, here today talking about a couple different things. We'll go ahead and talk about system design first, and then we'll get back to the four motor drivers and then the new drivers that XL's got out. Um, a couple things we especially particularly in a marine environment, there's a lot of factors and functions that go into what you need to do to make a system design for a marine application. Um, the number one thing is, is there's a lot of misconceptions out there, what needs to happen and not happen. Um, one of the biggest flaws I see when, when, when customers come through our shop is um, they'll, they'll want to spend money on the towers, which is completely understandable for the riders and everything, but then a lot of times they forget about the inside of the boat, which is where, you know, typically when no one's riding, that's where everybody's having fun at. Um, the other misconception is, is that I see a lot of problems coming through the door on just, not just an Exile Tower speaker, but a, another brand, X, whatever brand it is. Uh, there's a lot of guys out there, including other shops, that are underpowering these speakers. So just to give you a little background on a speaker, uh, when you underpower a speaker, you can actually blow that speaker a lot quicker than per se overpowering it, because you have more headroom in it. The more a speaker distorts, the more you try to get out of it, that's when you start having product failure. So that's kind of one of those, those strange things out there that the, I see a lot of out there, that, 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 that a lot of equipment, even from the you know, the man, um, a lot of stuff with, with the sub, um, it comes the same way. There's there's a different areas and different ways to actually have a sub work in a boat and get the most out of it. And that comes down to system design and box design on how the, the sub functions inside of a, a marine application. A sub fire just out in open air, you know, that uh, at times becomes um, one of those things where it's like a convertible car where if you don't get some sort of a loading boundary in there, you're not getting the full potential of what a sub could do. Along with enclosure design, there's a lot of stuff out there that uh, the, that I see, because we're taking apart boats and stuff, where uh, the enclosure is just a raw MDF enclosure screwed to the floor. There's no any kind of coating on it. There's no, you know, nothing at all is a coating. And MDF is is just like a sponge, exactly. You get a little bit of water on it and it grows. It's, it's you know, they're like, sea turtle things, or those little sea monkeys. Yeah, the more you put in the water, they just end up going. Um, so there's different ways to go. Obviously, some sort of a synthetic material, the sub-enclosure is the best. It's not any kind of wood. A lot of the custom enclosures rebuild boats, um, redo the fiberglass resin the whole outside. Um, this last year, we were noticing we've got some small little pinholes you can't really see, and we've had some issues there. So we take it one step further now. We're actually rubberized, undercoating the fiberglass uh, resin that we're soaking the boxes with. So we're, we're really trying to make it so they don't have an issue down the road because it's longevity in a boat. The, the, the marine environment compared to a car is very, 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 very harsh on equipment. So you gotta try to do things that, that make sure that that install, the integrity of that install lasts longer. The other thing I see a lot of problems out there is is uh, no one uses stainless steel screws because I think a lot of it comes down to they don't cost that much more. I think it comes down to laziness from other right. shops. Yeah. Available, Home Depot exactly, now. exactly. <laughs> um, a lot of times, because it's taking my guys, you know, I've had to beat up on them sometimes to get to understand. But I mean, the basic concept is is a standard drywall screw or standard pan head screw, it's easy. You just put it on a drill, ram it into wherever it's mounted, it's great. With the stainless, you can't do that. You strip the heads out. So you physically have to have another drill, an eighth inch bit. You pre-drill it and mount it. But what's going to happen with stainless screws is not going to rust and you're down the road. It doesn't matter if the amplifier doesn't get wet. It's a moist, hot, humid environment, especially in the summertime when you're up under a bulkhead or something like that. So that's another issue uh, that I see a lot. Now, the other thing that's really important, too, that you want to look for uh, and, and think about when you're doing system design is cabling. That is probably the, my biggest pet peeve out there that I see that drives me up the wall. Um, I can't tell you how many times somebody goes, oh, man, that cable's 30 bucks, do you have something cheaper? Or we're, we're doing a boat system for another boat company, not trying to pick on them too much, but they're going, well, we're used to buying, you know, six to eight dollar RCA cables. Well, that, that cable, that RCA cable, first of all, when you get an inexpensive cable, you, there's a reason why it costs less, okay? The number one thing that cable does is transfer sound, from your radio down to your amplifier. That's, so if you have a weak component right there, everything downhill, you're losing sound quality from. The second thing, since the 
in a marine environment exposed to the elements and weather, you need to have a cable that you know, can hold up over time. I've taken some cables out of boats and they're all oxidized and changed colors and they've been wet and you know, they do some really funky stuff. The other thing a lot of people don't know about is the end of an RCA cable, and I should have brought some so I could pass them around and think about it. The inexpensive ones are just the silver, and then you got the male side of the, of the pin that goes in. <coughs> the inexpensive ones are just solid and solid. Any kind of middle of the road, upper end cable, they'll have little notches all the way around. And the real high end cables will have up to eight on the outside ring and then a four prong, kind of like a cross on the tip of the, of the, um, the male standout in them. And what that does is they're, they're actually sprung, so they're actually, like the middle one's sprung out and the outer rings are sprung in. And those are relief cuts. So that what allows that to do, it goes on and they're hard to get on and off, okay? And what that does, it makes more surface contact which means more signal, then you're not going to have anything loose. We've done a lot of um, fix-its and stuff of that nature where we'll throw in, uh, we do a lot of uh, volume control knobs on towers and uh, bays, and we use existing cables in the boats. We always try to do that um, if the customer doesn't want to purchase new cables. And this, so this last summer we've had some issues with some guys coming back in, and they're just like, we got some weird noise on our towers, uh, which we'll get to in a second about horns. And we come to find out that these inexpensive cables sitting on there are, you know, they're not falling off, but you can spin them. Well, it's not making a good enough contact, and that's actually generating noise. Because what those volume control knobs are, they're just a potentiometer, so they just decrease the signal going out. So if you have something spinning on them, you can actually get noise on it. So we've, uh, so cables are very, very important, um, a thing to think about. And there's also... It's, it's kind of one of those things, it's like Bluetooth in a car right now. It's kind of one of those things you get what you pay for. Okay, and what I mean by that is, um, you know, there's, there's two standards of cables, like your power cable. You get a lot of stuff out there that's, it's, it's you know, a buck fifteen a foot for four gauge. And then you got another company that's three ninety nine. Okay, the reason is the three ninety nine is actual CEA. Is it CEA? Okay, just want to make sure. I always mix up those. Uh, it's actually certified that it's going to have X amount of strainers and it's a true 4 gauge. This company doesn't have that stamping, they're not involved in that. So that 4 gauge is actually an oversized jacket which is a lot cheaper than the copper in the middle of it and it's actually less than a 4 gauge. So just because it's cheaper, you're not getting a bargain out there on it. You're actually decreasing what your amplifier can put out. You're not getting the full voltage to it. Um, so cables are very, very important. Um, as you get into system design, on a, on a marine product. The size make sure you have enough power for the tower speakers to give them to perform exactly what you want. You also want something for the sub. You gotta look at, and a lot of people don't realize this, a sub isn't just a magical thing you throw an amp in and put it in there and it's great. Oh, this brand, I hear this a lot. Oh, this brand, this bit pumps, it puts out more. Well, that's not necessarily true. There's a lot of great brands out there, a lot of great products. The biggest thing that you gotta do, and a lot of people don't understand this, is you have to match impedance and what the woofer can handle with the amplifier and what, and what the amplifier can put out. Prime example is, you got a dual voice coil, a dual two ohm voice coil here, right? Four. Four, okay. So, look, so, so let's, let's talk about voice coils real quick. Some drivers, like this guy, are a single voice coil. A lot of times there's manufacturers out there that make eight ohm, 